As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode. There will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during this conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Devang Bhatt. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Darwin. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of IDBI Capital, I welcome you all to Sensa's Q1 FI24 earnings call. We have with us Mr. Manish Tandon, CEO and Managing Director of Sensa Technology, Mr. Sachin Rute, Chief Financial Officer, and a few other members of the senior management team. Before I hand over the call to Manish, I would like to highlight that the safe harbor statement of the second slide of the Anish presentation is assumed to be read, read and understood. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Devanu. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Uh, thank, you, thank, thank you for taking the time to join us today to discuss Zensar's financial results for the first quarter of FY24. With me on this call are my colleagues, Vijay Simha, who is the Chief Operating Officer, Sachin Zute, who is the CFO, and Vivek Ranjan, who is the CHRO. With that, I will turn to the summary of quarterly results. For the first quarter of FY24, we registered a service revenue of 149.2 million, representing a sequential quarter on quarter growth of 2.4% in constant currency. Our overall revenue stood at 149.3 million, representing a sequential QOQ growth of 1.3% in both reported and constant currency terms. In line with our stated strategy, we continue to refocus on pass-through revenues. Let me walk you through the performance of our geographies and verticals for the quarter. All growth numbers are in constant currency and correspond to services revenues only. The U.S. region posted sequential POQ services revenue growth of 1.3% and a YOY decline of 0.2%. The Europe region registered sequential POQ services revenue growth of 6% and YOY growth of 3.4% in past currency. We continue to have good traction in the region from both long-standing and new clients. The South Africa region saw good growth momentum with sequential QOQ services revenue growth of 3.4% and YOY growth of 19.6%. Our sustained focus to our data experience led engineering and cloud native capability has led to steady growth on the back of new project ramp ups at some of our key clients in the region. Coming to the verticals, Banking, financial services, and insurance reported sequential QOQ services revenue growth of 4% and a YOY growth of 13.2% in constant currency. We are witnessing consistent growth in this vertical over the last few quarters, aided by new deal wins at some of our key clients. ITech, including emerging, registered sequential QOQ services revenue decline of 2.6% and YOY decline of 4% in constant currency. Manufacturing vertical registered sequential QOQ services revenue decline of 0.4%, 0.5%, and year-over-year growth, year growth of 8.2% in constant currency. Consumer services registered sequential QOQ services revenue growth of 11.5% and YOY decline of 7% in constant currency. In the high-tech manufacturing and consumer services vertical, we continue to see softness in the overall demand environment as clients continue to defer or optimize their capital spend and scale back their budgets. This has resulted in reprioritization of spends at client side with discretionary projects witnessing a reduction in scope or getting deferred. From the first quarter of FY24, our gross margin stood at 33.6%, representing a sequential QOQ increase of 170 basis points. Our EBITDA stood at 18.7%, 
a sequential QOQ increase of 420 basis points. The order book of QY, Q1 FY24 stood at 154.2 million, supported by healthy renewals and multiple wins across verticals. As per our usual wage hike cycle, effective 1st July, we gave our wage hikes across the organization. I am pleased to share that for the first quarter, our last 12 month attrition declined to 15.9%, a sequential improvement of 390 basis points. In quarter, attrition continues to see downtrend on account of easing supply side issues and of employee centric policies. As one of our core principles, we continue to drive client centricity across the organization. Our annual customer engagement score for FY23 has seen a 13.6% improvement to 66.5 in FY23. And this is something that we are most proud of. With that, I will now invite Sachin Zute, our Chief Financial Officer, to provide an update on critical financial data. Sachin? Thank you, Manish. Good day, everyone, and thank you all for joining this call. In addition to Manish talking about the business, I will take you through some of the key financial metrics for the quarter ending June 23. The revenue for the first quarter of FY24 stood at 149.3 million in US dollar terms, reflecting growth of 1.3% sequentially in reported terms as well as in constant currency terms. Services revenue for the quarter grew by 2.3% sequentially in reported terms and 2.4% in constant currency terms. EBITDA for the quarter stood at 18.7%, increase of 420 basis points from previous quarter. This includes one-time benefit of 100 basis points, primarily on account of research and development credit received during the quarter. Improvement of EBITDA for the quarter was primarily driven by utilization improvement from 81.4% to 82.5%, which is 1.1% increase quarter on quarter basis. Ongoing operational efficiencies program has helped for the cost of delivery during the quarter. Resizing of sales and support functions also helped uh, us to uh, improve the EBITDA for the quarter. As communicated in last few quarters, we continue to focus on improving efficiencies in sales and support functions. Current improvements in sales and marketing costs will be reinvested in the business through capability building and strengthening sales organization further. LTM attrition levels have shown continuous improvement over quarters and stood at 15.9% for Q1 FY24, lowest amongst recent quarters. The SO for the quarter continues to remain healthy at 74 days. For the quarter ended, cash and cash equivalents, including investments, stood at $233.8 million, $32.3 million increase from last quarter, and $70.2 million increase year on year. The effective tax rate for the quarter is 25.7%, an improvement of 50 basis points quarter on quarter. The total amount of outstanding hedges as, as on June 30th, 2023, were equivalent to $246.7 million against $173.7 million in Q4 FY23. On ESG front, we continue to make progress in line with our published ESG vision and mission. As of Q1 FY24, our global green energy component is 17.9% of total energy consumed, and our carbon emission for, uh, from scope one and scope two saw significant reduction of 49.3% uh, 49 compared to our base year of FY19. We continue our journey on water positivity with water regeneration exceeding water consumption at our Pune campus. A week-long celebration of World Earth Day marked on April 22 with various contests for employees and World Environment Day on 5th June with plastic cleanup drives across our India locations and local shoreline cleanup activity at Melipitas in California. 
With that, I now invite Vijay Simma, our Chief Operating Officer, to provide updates on business operations. Thank you. Thank you, Manish and Sachin. Uh, greetings, everyone. Manish has provided insights about our business and Sachin just shared details about the key financial metrics. I will provide inputs about our op operational efficacy and performance of our service lines. As part of sharpening our operational excellence, we continue to focus on pyramid optimization, managing utilization in an optimal range, calibrated usage of subcontractors, as well as managing our on-site mix. Disciplined execution on these initiatives enabled us to reduce our overall cost of delivery. Enhanced fulfillment rigor enabled us to minimize the impact of volatile demands that we see due to the macroeconomic situation. This rigor enabled us to increase the build headcount and also improve our utilization, as mentioned by Sachin, by 110 basis points. Service lines, uh, we continue to partner with our clients to help them deliver high value services to their customers by leveraging the innovative offerings from our service lines. This quarter, we saw good growth in most of our service lines. On a quarter on quarter basis, in reported terms, our data engineering and analytics service line registered an impressive growth of about 12.6%. Advanced engineering services grew by 5.5%. Foundation services grew by 6.7%. And experience services grew by 2.5%. Application services and enterprise applications registered a decline of 4%. Our key service lines, advanced engineering services, data engineering and analytics, and experience services continue to scale up well making up close to 33.8% 30, of our total revenues. We are witnessing notable movement in our digital engineering capabilities. Our generative AI engineering services offering, termed AI engineering buddy, is now listed on the Azure marketplace. In our data engineering and analytics practice, our experience-led approach to cloud data engineering has resonated extremely well with our clients. We continue to focus on improving our offerings further around generative AI or data engineering, improving customer experience through AI, supply chain analytics, and so on and so forth. With that, I now hand it back to Manish. Thank you, Vijay, and uh, thank you, Sachin. In conclusion, uh, ladies and gentlemen, our discipline program on improving margins along the identified levels has given us meaningful results over the last three quarters. While the near-term demand environment continues to be challenging, resulting in delayed decision-making and slowdown in spend, we are certain that the long-term secular growth in IT industry will not diminish. Further, over the last two years, we have increased our addressable market through our service line investments. We are working on gaining mind share with our clients through these service lines and our conversations continue to remain positive. Our experience to engineering to engagement proposition is echoing well with our clients. Net new and alliance function is shaping up well. Investing for sustainable long-term growth remains our top priority. With that, we can open the lines for any questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchtone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Nitin Padmanabhan from Investec. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, good morning and congrats on the great, great numbers. A uh, couple of questions. Um, so first is, uh, uh, Manish, could you give us a sense on uh, how the 
the outcome on cross sell initiatives uh, any uh, interesting uh, things that you have seen so far and how it's looking like um, the second is your thoughts on uh, so far the results that have come out uh, in terms of uh, the rest of the industry i think they have been calling out weakness on a going forward basis and so on and so forth do you think that sort of raises the risk of sort of any revenue declines in the near term or you think from a portfolio perspective based on the rigor that we have that um, uh, you know we should still be in positive territory relatively uh, and if you could give some color on the consumer vertical as well and high tech and uh, finally uh, any uh, uh, what, what what do you think could be the wage hike impact how should we think about that uh, sachin and uh, if you could uh, also give a sense on the net new wins during the quarter uh, so those were the questions thank you and uh, thanks uh, um, uh, thanks for the um, uh, positive uh, commentary on the results uh, i think your first question was around uh, cross selling so cross selling is uh, has been uh, a positive uh, for us we are seeing a good amount of green shoots there one of the ways that uh, we measure cross selling is um how um how deeply we are penetrating certain accounts and we continue to see very very positive momentum uh, on that and our storyline around experience to engineering to engagement uh, is showing results uh, we are creating uh, we are cross selling a lot of our services uh, into uh, these accounts uh downsides on revenues i don't think that i can comment more than what my larger peers have commented the market remains stuck uh but uh we continue to execute well and uh, we are hoping that um the execution will lead to consistent results as we move forward uh consumer and high tech uh, they remain weak spots for us they are still work in process i don't think we can you know some of the weakness will uh, go away every day you know different sorts of technology companies are declaring uh, uh, this uh, or declaring uh, some amount of slowdown or um, furloughs or letting go of people so these two verticals remain work in process for us but we are seeing some newer deals in these two verticals and if uh, one or two of them can get converted that will be very positive for us uh wage hike impact uh, i would leave it to sachin to answer uh, net new wins we had opened nine new accounts uh this uh, this quarter uh which is slightly more from a run rate perspective than what we have done in the in the past sachin you would like to comment on uh, wage hike impact sure uh, thanks manish so uh, nitin uh, as we know that uh, usually our wage hike cycle is from 1st of july and we will be giving we have actually given a uh, hike uh, uh, to across the bands uh, uh for starting from 1st of july and given the current market condition you know i think we have benchmarked uh, the wage hikes and based on that wage hikes have been given obviously we don't want to make any uh, forward looking statement but i can only say that uh, given the market have softened a bit as compared with last year the number could be slightly lower than what we did last year Sure, perfect. Uh, thank you so much, and all the very best. Thank you. Thanks, Nitin. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Mukul Garg from Motila Loswal Financial <coughs> Services. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks for taking the question. Uh, Manish, uh, just you know a bit of uh, color also on the BSI space. Uh, uh, this quarter, BSI continues to be fairly strong. So, how are you seeing there has been a fair bit of rumbling around BFS spending across uh, the industry? Uh, is that something where you continue to see 
स्ट्रेंथ फॉर ए न्यूनतम बेसिस और मैंने कैंडिडेट टेक ए पॉज आफ्टर द स्ट्रांग रन व्हिच इज हैपन एंड सचिन ऑन द यू नो मार्जिन साइड हाउ शुड वी लुक एट द कॉस्ट चेंजेस व्हिच हैव हैपेंड दिस क्वार्टर आई नो यू इलेबोरेटेड अ बिट बट ऑन एन एब्सोल्यूट बेसिस देयर हैज बीन अ मीनिंगफुल डिप इन बोथ एम्प्लॉय एक्सपेंसेस एज वेल एज ऑन सेल्स एंड मार्केटिंग साइड Uh, what has really surprised you on the upside, and uh, you know how should we look at this uh, going forward? Uh, thanks. Uh, so I'll answer the first question, and Sachin can take the next one. So on the BFSI sector, the commentary, uh, uh, I would I would agree with the commentary that the competition has provided. Uh, the market remains tough, but again, you have to look at it in our context where we have. uh you know in most of our accounts in bfsi space we have a relatively very small market share and as bfsi sector is looking um to cut costs and so on they are sometimes looking at suppliers like us who are smaller more agile uh and can deliver same or better results at a lower price point and i think we are uh benefiting uh from from that that approach sachin yeah thanks thanks manish uh so mukul uh, as we you know for last uh, three four quarters we've been running a very systematic program on uh, cost optimization and i think the results of that uh, con- uh, you know continues to flow in and a few of the things uh, which has affected it is obviously uh, the pyramid corrections uh, which we are seeing Uh, the n minus one hiring program, which we initiated a couple of quarters back, that has uh, definitely contributed uh, uh, to the overall uh, cost of the company. Apart from that, uh, you you have seen that uh, our utilization uh, has also moved up uh, in the right direction from eighty one point five to eighty two point six. That has also uh, contributed a bit. Uh, also, uh, one of the one of the focus area for us has been. uh the reduction uh, of uh, uh, of the cost of agency hiring that is also something uh, which is uh, one of our primary focus area and over there as well we have seen some uh, movement and that has helped the uh, correcting the overall cost structure in last few quarters and the results are of that is being seen uh, in current quarter Mukul, does that answer your question? Sorry, uh, I was on mute. Uh, uh, Sachin, just a bit of a follow-up on that. Uh, you know, you guys have been guiding for a mid-teens uh, profitability. Uh, does this materially change that? Uh, so, Mukul, if you remember, we've been talking about this cost correction, and uh, what we are doing over here is wherever there is a spot, we are trying to take that spot out. create headroom for investment into growth so as part of my opening script uh, uh, mukul i said that the current uh, drop which you have seen in attendance we will try to reinvest back into uh, the business in further strengthening the sales engine uh, for the company yeah sachin has such so much fact that even i have lost weight <laughs> okay thank you so much for answering the question thank you the next question is from the line of sandeep shah from equitus securities please go ahead yeah thanks thanks for the opportunity and congrats on a very good execution despite tough macro especially on the margins and services group uh, so manish the first question is uh, in a tough macro to see more than 2% growth in services or also a positive growth of 1% uh, despite client specific issue is very heartening So, do you believe the cost-saving upselling efforts will help you to keep maintaining the growth momentum even in a near term, despite the tough macro as a whole? See again, uh, as far as macro is concerned, I will reiterate that as far as we are such a small player with such small market shares in our clients, that macro will have. limit should have limited impact on us if, if we are executing well simultaneously as i have mentioned before 
Uh, with our new service offering, we have significantly expanded the addressable market. So we are relying on these two things um, uh, to try and continue our uh, sales and growth momentum. Uh, last two quarters we have been successful. Um, let's hope this success continues as we go forward. Thanks. And my follow-up is uh, the uh, uh, green shoots about the order intake growth uh, will help you to get the lead indicators about the growth momentum further increasing or not. So how are you looking at order pipeline, order intake, whether the investment efforts uh, have resulted into this or do you still believe uh, there are one or two more quarters in terms of investment in effort before we start seeing uh, uptick in the order intake and what is the percentage new business within the order intake? So, uh, uh, Sandeep, thanks for that question. We track our order book uh, based on three uh, broad categories, EE, which is renewals, EN, which is existing clients, new business, and NN, which is net new clients. Um, I can say that uh, on EN, which is existing clients, new business, um, we have had the highest order booking in the last two, three quarters, which is uh, continues, which means that we are executing well on the cross-selling uh, program uh, that we have and trying to penetrate deeper into accounts. I hope that answers your question. Okay. And just uh, last thing on the margins, uh, just wanted to understand uh, now the normalized margin at the beta level could be 17.8 if I sit out the one time uh, gain of 100 bits. So is it right to assume uh, uh, whatever further improvement we may actually have, uh, we may invest back in the business and uh, we can continue in this range of 17-18% digital margin going forward. And is there any further scope for any further uh, facts to be reduced or do you believe we have optimized on that? So, uh, Sadeep, that's a great question and that is a question I ask myself also. Um, as I look back, see, uh, as a new CEO, I have not had a chance to go through a complete cycle of four quarters, right? So we have not seen uh, Q3 impact of furloughs, how, to, how it will impact us, the slight slowdown that happens during holiday periods, and uh, especially in uh, Q4, we have not seen that. So if you ask me what is the equilibrium margin of the business, I would continue to say that I would like to make sure that it doesn't go below mid-team, which has been the promise of the company uh, till, till now. And um, uh, we will invest some of the margins uh, into, uh, um, into revenue growth and in building up our employee skill base. Uh, but, uh, as I said, we will continue to make sure that the margins do not go below mid-teens as promised by, uh, promised by the company uh, before. Okay. And anything positive, anything positive uh, I'll be as happy as you are. <laughs> Thanks. And just last thing, Sachin, what is the nature of uh, one-time R&D credit and will it continue every year in the first quarter or? Uh, so, you know, this is, this R&D credit is subject to certain government grants uh, which we get in overseas jurisdiction and it's completely dependent on, uh, you know, their cycle of uh, payout. Uh, like just to give example, the similar R&D credit we got in Q3 of FY23. But fortunately for us, uh, it came in Q1 itself uh, for uh, for the current fiscal. So it completely depends on their cycle, uh, and uh, there may not be any predictability uh, in that right now. But it can come once in a year. Uh, generally, that has been the cycle which we have seen historically. Okay, okay. Thanks, thanks, gentlemen, all the best. Thank you, Sandeep. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Devang Bhatt from IDBI Capital. Please go ahead. 
Hi sir, uh, congratulations on a good set of numbers. So last time in the analyst meet, you said that there are a lot of cross sell opportunities. So in terms of time mining, where do you see the opportunities, and which service line uh, specifically are seeing more traction in our clients? Secondly, uh, on overall basis, where do you see which services line do you see that will be a key driver of growth in the long term? In the, uh, I would say um, uh, to answer uh, your first question. See, we have come to the, we have gone to the market with this theme of that we are the best company uh, out there who can do right from research to experience to engineering to actually engagement, both on products and on projects. And we are seeing a lot of traction on our experience services business because of cross sales. Um, in fact, our uh, revenues from acquired business entities have actually grown at a faster pace in this quarter than the rest of the, the business. So we are tra seeing traction there. We are seeing traction in enterprise uh, SaaS space, which is um, SFDC, Oracle, uh, this thing. We are seeing traction in advanced engineering services, and we believe that advanced engineering services will continue to be a growth area uh, for us, uh, especially with the advent of chat GPT and LLMs and, and AI. So I would say uh, the newer service offerings will see, obviously, will see faster growth than as they should uh, as far as. Um, overall growth is concerned. Great, sir. And secondly, on uh, you said that you know you will focus more on the uh, not the uh, commoditized uh, MUT, but the other part of the MUT business. So where are we on that, and uh, how will how are we progressing on that part? So I think uh, what we are trying to do, see, um, MUT. Uh, first of all, uh, please don't get me wrong. I love MUT business. Uh, we all do in the industry. Uh, and uh, what I meant when I said that was, you know, the traditional annuity business is, you know, large infrastructure deal or large application development and maintenance deal, et cetera. Uh, these, we may not be as competitive as some of our tier one players, but in the newer areas like experience services, where we sign up with clients for the uh, total number of pod, 10 pods of 100 people for the next two years kind of deal. Those are the deals that we are very interested in, and uh, we are making good progress on those deals. Sir, any number on what NUT right now we have? Or so uh, generally, uh, we have not made that uh, uh, you know number. Though we internally track it, but not that's not a uh, number which we generally disclose. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you for taking my question. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. To ask a question, you may please press star and one. The next question is from the line of Manik Taneja from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for the opportunity and congratulations for the strong performance. Manish, I wanted to get your sense with regards to our margin optimization, uh, given the kind, given what we've seen with regards to our headcount uh, metrics, as well as the improvement in terms of our offshore delivery. How should we be thinking about these two aspects if I'm thinking about over the next 12 to 18 month time frame? Sanjay, do you want to take that? So Manik, uh, uh, as you know, obviously, Obviously, we've been working on multiple levers in last six to nine months on improving our uh, EBITDA margins. And uh, as you know, that over last three quarters, they have definitely given us uh, desired results. Now, it's very difficult for me to give you guidance for next two quarters because, as you know, that we don't provide uh, guidance. But as Manish rightly said, the objective will be to maintain the uh, EBITDA margins in a narrow range around mid team and if we have anything uh, about that objective will be to invest back into the business in capability building 
and uh, uh, you know sell with as required basis vijay do you want to add anything to this uh, manish i think largely sachin has covered uh, uh, the only thing from an operational perspective that i would like to add is that uh, we are focused on those three four important levers pyramid optimization as well as uh, uh, utilization management we think at this point of time that like we will operate in a narrow range when it comes to utilization uh, especially considering the fact that like we have a fair bit of whatever macro economic stuff that that could be create volatile demand situation so that's pretty much the only thing that i want to add apart from what sachin has already commented sure and have you disclosed the the the, the value of dilgens in the current quarter So, so we did. Uh, it's one fifty four point two million dollars is the order book uh, which we have reported. Sure, it's part Thank of the analysis presentation. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Nitin Padmanabhan from Investec. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Hi. Uh, thank you for the follow up. Uh, uh, Sachin, uh, uh, the uh, employee cost on uh the, on the you know the bsc relief it uh, actually down 4% sequential so i had come to sort of flat age so uh, what sort of explains the that difference is it uh, uh, so that was one and second i uh, wanted your thoughts on where this rnd benefit is sort of recorded uh on the pnl so on th- those were the two things so um i think employee cost primarily is uh, due to couple of reasons one is uh, definitely the pyramid uh, correction which i spoke about uh, you know the the every attrition which we've been having for last few quarters we've been uh, filling it with n minus 1 level and that is something which is uh, helping the overall uh, employee cost uh, for us also if you look at our focus on melting the fat which was there on site and uh, i think that is something is also giving us uh, some benefits uh, as part of uh, uh, the overall employee uh, cost optimization and attrition on a quarter on quarter basis has been dipping and i think the impact is also flowing through uh, in the 4% uh, number uh, which you are saying okay and, and uh, uh, on the uh, r&d expense uh, i i mean r&d revenue so Okay. it is part of the gross margin uh, for the company it is part of the gross margin so so within the sgna there is nothing unusual that the, that's more like a sustained rate or how should one think about that like that's a sharp Not drop probably you can say that yes you can sgna uh, benefits you can say there is no significant uh, one time aspect in right now there okay so it's only in the gross perfect yes yeah perfect perfect thank you thanks it Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pratap Maliwal from Mount Intra Finance Private Limited. Please go ahead. Hi, am I audible, please? Yes, we are audible. Yes. Hello. Uh, you may proceed with your question, sir. You are audible. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thanks for taking my question and uh, congrats on a great margin performance this quarter. So I just wanted to ask. Uh, last quarter, I think we had said we had some right shifting of revenues, particularly in the Europe geography, which seems to be reflecting in our numbers this quarter as well. So could you just help me with uh, quantifying the uh, revenue? How much was that? So um, uh, obviously that revenue which uh, we spoke about last quarter has been uh, realized uh, in this quarter. but uh, it's uh, you know it's not going to be possible for us to exactly specify how much that uh, uh, you know that is in current numbers okay sir no problem fine okay for taking my question and uh, congrats for a good set of numbers thank you thank you very much thank you the next question is from the line of darshil javeri from crown capital please go ahead uh, uh hi uh, good evening team and congratulations on a great set of results uh so most of my questions have been answered so i just uh, would want to know uh in the upcoming year what kind of flavor do you see in terms of uh, what you know a macro environment or you know what 
when can we expect you know a bit better inducive environment for us to keep on uh, start growing maybe it can happen next year or this year could you use you know what sense do you get from you know your interaction with clients and everyone uh i wish we had a crystal ball uh is all i can say i think uh you know uh there is a lot of talk in the us of a hard landing soft landing semi soft landing um interest rates um and uh, still the economy is very resilient at least uh, in our largest market uh, in some of our smaller markets we are uh, seeing more impact uh, of inflation and and so on but uh, frankly um i don't think that things will materially change uh in the next 6 months at least and that is perhaps the best i can say <laughs> no, no no fair enough sir it's uh, it's yeah i think everyone's in the same boat this is just uh, wanted of flavor as possible so yeah uh, it's a correct thing it's a very difficult thing to get yeah uh, so yeah, i think yeah that answer my question and all the best team thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of sandeep shah from equivalent securities please go ahead yeah just a follow up to what nitin has asked uh, if you look at the run rate of sales and marketing expenses uh, it used to be between 90 to 100 crores uh, it has fallen to 77 crores in june of 23 and just in your uh, uh, answer to the earlier question it believes that this run rate can continue right uh, so 6.3% as a percentage to revenue in terms of sales and marketing cost can continue despite we are looking for investments uh, going forward so uh, as i said the objective of the current uh, correction which you are seeing in the uh, sales and marketing cost uh, we are in process of investing back uh, into the business through the appropriate hiring which we need to do to look at the growth for the future whenever the cycle uh, turns around so those investments are has already started sandeep so uh, from that perspective uh, we want to invest uh, in capability building inside the organization and ensure that we are ready for the growth when things start moving in the right direction I mean, just to answer your question, uh, we are not cutting back on sales by any stretch of imagination. We are, uh, even as we speak, every week we have two or three uh, new sales people uh, joining us. Uh, they are coming in with a lot of new ideas and a lot of energy, and we are excited to have them on board. Um, we will not cut muscle. We will cut back. Okay. Okay. And just one issue. You sounded slightly bearish on consumer, but consumer this quarter has done well. So is there any one-off projects uh, which may not repeat going forward? And is there any large client specific issue in any of the verticals which you foresee, or this is more to do with macro uh, versus anything else across industries as a well? whole? Well, I think uh, look uh, at least for consumer, I had told you uh, guys last last time that. i think the worst is behind us right and uh, the team that we have is a very resilient team they will not let go of easily um and they are opening new accounts they are farming existing accounts and they are doing a wonderful job despite the environment okay okay and there are no large client specific issues in many of the verticals no large clients with any big issues uh, in any other verticals we don't comment on individual clients but you can get a sense of where issues are or not there based on our top 5 to top 15 20 whatever to guys measure us on okay okay and last thing as a summary is it fair to say apart from high tech and manufacturing uh, we are started with making some green shoots or better demand payments uh, in the rest of the verticals I don't think uh, you know at this point of time we are seeing any broad green shoots. Uh, you know, the, uh, so the macroeconomic environment, which is there for others, continues to be for us as well. 
So I think uh, given the current situation, we are trying to see what best we can do uh, in current or not. Yeah, it's all about executing well. With our size, if we execute well, we will do continue to do well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to ask a question, you may please press star and one. The next question is from the line of Manik Taneja from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for the follow-up opportunity. Uh, Sajid, if you could uh, detail out what you meant by replacing the existing workforce with N-1 minus one work N minus one uh, workforce, because when I'm looking at the employee metrics that you disclose in your annual report, it appears that the proportion of lower age employees has only gone down for us in FI23 versus FI22. So it really be helpful if you could detail out what you meant by that. So Manik, uh, as you know, that one of the programs which we have been running is every attrition uh, which happens in the company. We are trying to see wherever possible, how can I fill that with the junior uh, employee which helps me to correct the uh, correct the cost uh, structure on an overall basis. Historically, we we did see that uh, uh, it, it, the pyramid was kind of a diamond, and uh, over the last three four, uh, three quarters, we are trying to get it uh, in the shape. So, from if you look at from the Q1 of last year to now, it has definitely uh, improved in shape. So the comparison which you might be seeing must be from the FY22 to uh, FY23, Manik. Sure. Just to confirm between FY22 to FY23, when I see the numbers in the annual report, the sub-30 year uh, age uh, segment essentially is reduced to about less than 41% of the total workforce versus 46% as of end of FY22. Okay, we can we can get that checked, uh, uh, Manik, and I can uh, touch base upon it uh, with you offline. S N M basis, it, the understanding that you guys are giving is that we will step up the S N M investments as we continue to invest in the business from the current run rate that we see in the current quarter. Yes, Manik, that's a current and a correct understanding. Sure. Thank you, and all the best for the future. Thanks, Manik. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anand Agrawal from Balaji Investments. Please go ahead. Thank you so much for the opportunity and uh, congratulations for the wonderful set of numbers. I hope, I mean, uh, in last three, four years, and not in three, four years, I mean, uh, this has been the best ever performance in terms of the uh, PAC numbers, uh, though the uh, top line has not gone substantially. So my question is that uh, since company is sitting with a lot of cash, so... Uh, uh, what is the plan to deploy this uh, cash going ahead to so that the revenue and the further business can be announced? Uh, so thank you, thank you for the question. Uh, as you know, as we have earlier stated as well, we continue to look for opportunities to, uh, you know, scout for targets which adds to the capability of Genta, uh, and uh, we want to continue uh, on that journey. At any point of time, uh, we keep on evaluating three to four targets. Once they eval uh, once uh, once we find the right one, we want to use this cash uh, in buying the uh, right company. At the same time, our dividend policy as part of capital allocation continues to be uh, what we have done historically. And uh, so one more question, last question. Just a, just a broader picture. I just want to understand what kind of, I mean, uh, uh, growth in terms of percentage you are seeing going at maybe a uh, year or two kind of that. Just a broader question. <laughs> as, as Manish also said that, you know, if we, had, we would have had a crystal ball, you know, it would have been wonderful. But unfortunately, given the current scenario, when the visibility on the business is relatively low, it's very difficult for me to actually make any comment uh, from that perspective. But I can only say that the IT spend globally has only shown positive uh, direction over last uh, decade, decade and a half. And we all believe with the changing technology landscape, uh, you know, the, the, the prospect for the growth in this industry continues to be relatively strong. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sarang Sanil 
from RW Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, sir. Thank you for the opportunity and congrats on the current number. So my first question is, uh, is the 10 million reported as purchase of traded goods net of this R&D credit? And if not, how has this number gone down substantially? If my second question is, on the employee side, can we ex expect this to stabilize around this range and ramp up as good demand comes in? Or can we expect this to go down further on a net basis? And my final question, uh, is it possible to give some color on how you are able to bring down the attrition level to this range? And money is something you feel Lensar is doing differently compared to other companies. Those are my three questions. Thank you. So can we just repeat your first question, please? Because we could not get that clearly. Sure, sir. So uh, the 10 million uh, INR number reported on the uh, financials as purchase of traded goods. Is this net of uh, R&D credit that you received? So there is no linkage between R&D credit and $10 million uh, traded goods, which uh, you are uh, referring to. The R&D credit benefit, which we got, is currently factored into uh, the gross margin. And uh, the 10 million rupees, uh, 10 million rupees uh, credit group is part of the revenue line item which uh, we have reported. Now, for the addition question, I'm going to request my colleague uh, Vivek to comment on. Please, yeah. thank Th you. Thanks a lot, Sachin. Uh, thanks, Sharan, uh, for the question. Yes, you are right uh, that what we have in, in terms of our retention, it is best in class. And as Manish mentioned, uh, we have. Uh, very employee centric policies combined with the, the initiatives which we have taken that helps us a lot. And from the perspective of our culture, we very strongly focus on creating a happiness ecosystem where employees uh, learn and thrive. That has helped us a lot. And also, we have taken a set of initiatives to ensure that uh, there is a high level of investment in learning and there is a culture of recognition and managerial capability built, all of which uh, has uh, ensured that uh, we are best in class in terms of retention and we stay focused uh, in this pursuit. Uh, okay, so, so also on the employee count, what do you expect? On the employee count, uh, uh, the hiring will happen depending on how the demand shifts up. Uh, we are very closely watching out uh, uh, the current uh, demand environment. And given that the attrition across the industry has slowed down, our ability to uh, fulfill in a very short time has definitely improved. So depending on demand environment, we will be taking that call. Sure, sure. Thank you, sir, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will take that as our last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Manish Tandon for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Well, I would like to thank you all for being on this call. There were a lot of results uh, today in this sector, so I'm pleased to see that you decided to attend this call. Um, if you, I'm sure as you go through the results, you'll have more questions, and we have an excellent investor relations team who can help in answering all these questions. So thank you once again, and thank you for congratulating us on our good results. Thank you. On behalf of Zensar Technologies and IDBI Capital, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines.